dear friends. I'm out here at the bus stop, and I wanted to share a little bit today, honestly, about something that I'm very immature in, and I have great need to learn more. And that's the truth. But just thought I'd share a little bit in case that might help somebody. Because it's about love. And the Lord wants us to know His love. Right here, I jotted down Ephesians 3.18. And we're told, I'm paraphrasing, May we comprehend the length, height, depth, and width of God's love. To go on and know the love of Christ. That that's what we need to do. Um, 1 Corinthians 14.1 also says, Let love be your highest goal. Let love be your highest aim. Y'all, with the Lord comes change, all right? He changes the way we think about everything. That's what he does, all right? And then by these thoughts changing, because the Bible tells us out, out of the heart comes what? Adultery, slander, all sorts of wickedness and evil, right? So, it starts in here. And the love of God changes us. Alright? So, I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. And I, if that offends somebody, I greatly apologize. Please go to what you read and read it for yourself. Alright? And, and I do apologize. This is what I have accessible to me right here. But I'm going to read in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, okay? And we might read it just a little bit differently here, but just want to look at something. This summarizing, of course, we're told here, isn't it Paul saying, y'all, if, if I had all prophecy, Knew all the mysteries of things to come. Mysteries. Could speak in heavenly languages. Um, give all I have to the poor. Sacrifice my body. If I had the faith to move mountains. That's a great thing, ain't it? Have the faith. Because faith pleases the Lord. If I had all this, but I don't have love, I have nothing. Okay, and then we're going to pick up in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. And like I said, it may read a little different than what you're used to. Please forgive me. Please read it in your translation. But the thing is, what we're going to read a little bit different here, let me tell you, is because so many times we are too focused on ourself. We've got to ask the Lord to help us to get our eyes and our mind set on Him. Alright? That's going to profit us. That's going to change us. Okay? Rather than looking at ourselves. So let's read this like that. And we need one scripture to do that though. And I don't have exactly written down for you, but you know it and you can look it up. That scripture that's so profound and so wonderful that says, God is love. God is love. He's not like us, y'all, trying to do love, to love others and all this. He is love. He's love. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, because he is love, we're going to put his name right here where it says love. Where it says love is patient and kind. Well then that means God is patient and kind. You see? So God is love. So we can do that. It's safe. Alright. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Look at verse 4. God is patient and kind. God is patient and kind with you. And that sin you struggle with, when you let your mouth spew off to somebody, 
hurtful words, whatever unwholesome talk, slander or gossip, if that's still happening with you, what's this say? God is patient with you. He's very patient. It's not like all these other people in the world that, oh, you did what? I heard that. That's not how he is. He's patient. He's kind. Okay? Everything he does for you is kind. His motivation is only kind. Kindness. No intent to harm me. Alright? To shame me or guilt you. Pure love. God is not jealous. God is not boastful or proud or rude. Whew. I'm rude many times. God is not rude. I strive to be like Him, don't you? Don't you want to be like Him? It's amazing. But look, He's not proud. You know, He's not like us here in this world. The Lord gives just a little bitty wisdom to a person and they might go off and make a big name for themselves because what they're able to share or teach on or be eloquent with that subject matter that wisdom that came from the Lord because he has all wisdom right the Bible says he has all wisdom and he reveals it to mankind that's his glory to do that, the Bible says. He gives it and reveals it. And man takes it and makes a bunch of money for himself because of it. Or he makes a name for himself in this world because he had a little wisdom that the Lord gave him. And here the Lord is where all that wisdom is his. And it says right here, he is not proud. Oh, Lord, make us like you humble, right? God does not demand his own way. I demand my own way sometimes. Even if I don't blatantly come out and say, you've got to do it my way, I get frustrated around my house when things aren't done the way I like them to be. I, I fall in all these things, y'all. We all do. You say, Love is not irritable. <sighs> now, I don't even have to say nothing. I bet y'all know what I'm thinking. How many of us are irritable? Oh, Lord, he's so good. And look at this. Love keeps no record of wrong or when it's been wronged. And God keeps no record. Of when he's been wronged. Now that right there is good news, I know. You see? You remember what he does with our sin? That right there tells us that he keeps no record of wrong. Whew. I'm just, you know, I just, I feel crushed sometimes beneath the weight of this word. And that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to show us who we really are. It's meant to let us know that we've all fallen short of who he is. And it's meant to let us know that we need him. We really do, y'all. We need him. He doesn't keep record of when he's been wronged. And no matter how hard I try, some things I cannot forget. The Lord knows. And he's helping me. And if you have that, he will help you. God is never glad about injustice, but he rejoices over the truth and righteousness. He's never glad. He's not glad about it. God never gives up on you. Love never gives up. God never gives up on you. So no matter what, what if, what if somebody's listening that just feels like they fail beyond recovery, beyond saving, hopeless and desperate, 
this word right here that is truth. When everything else in this world is a lie, these words are truth. And it says right here, love never gives up. God is love. And therefore, God never gives up on you. He never gives up on you. Never loses faith. Is always hopeful. He always sees the best. And endures through every circumstance. God will endure through every circumstance with you. When your best of friends, your best of brothers and sisters in the Lord cannot endure with you in those hard places, the depths of hell sometimes that it feels like we're in, and they're praying for you, and they're letting you know they're there for you. But y'all, there's been times I've been in places so deep and dark that it didn't do a thing to me. Knowing people were praying for me didn't change a thing. I was still there. And I thought I'd lost my way. Deep, dark places. But I can say the Lord was there. Because this right here says He endures through every circumstance. Endures all things. He's the only one that can be with you there in some of those places. Some of us, the hurt and the pain that we have, memories that we can't seem to erase, the Lord knows. And He was with you during those things. That's something I can say to you. Show me. He was with me in my pain and my hurt, my deepest, darkest places. So, love will last forever. God will last forever. He is eternal. He endures. Um, but prophecy and speaking in unknown languages, special knowledge, all this stuff, y'all, is going to disappear. And there are three things that will endure. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is Him. He is the greatest. So, I just wanted to share that little bit, and I'm sorry that it went long. And I have this one final little scripture here that a couple here, 1 John 4 10. This is what we want to think about. It's not that we love God, but it's He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for your sin, for my sin. And in 1 John 4 19, we love because He first loved us. So that love that you have for the Lord is proof that He loves you. Because in order for you to love, He must have first loved you. He must have first set His eye on you, picked you out, chose you, to pour out His love in you. To indwell in you here in this earth. God is love. And He first loved you. And that is why you're able to love Him. Isn't that amazing? So, He loves us, friends. I can't think of a better thing to think about today. He loves us and the love of God. It constrains us, it keeps us, it changes us. And it's not about us, y'all, it's about Him. So I just ask, dear Father, that you would give us a heart that would want to know your love in every which way possible, Father. Would you show us your love? In the mess ups, in the fear, in the anxiety, in the pain, in every which way, in our little ordinary life that we have, will you show us your love, Father? Tangible ways, ways we can understand. That where it's not this great big idea anymore that you so love the world, that you sent your only son. But Father, 
May we know your love in a way that indwells us and changes us and pours through us that we might love others. That we might really, truly love, really love others because it's not our love that others need. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours, Lord. Please let us know your Lord. love. Please let us know, Lord. And I know you hear us. And I know you will. And we look forward to it. In Jesus' name we ask. Thank you. I hope y'all have a good day, friends. Bye-bye.